So, for question three, we have pKa of two four dinitrophenol is three point nine six. Okay, can you separate? from benzoic acid using acid base extraction. So for this question here, um, I wouldn't even say memorize, but you would have to use your acid base uh, table because you do need to answer this question to know the Ka slash pKa value of benzoic acid um, so the way the pKa works is kind of giving you in a sense a range of not only where it would create like a buffer solution but also it can be used as well to determine where like the amount of pH you need for you to protonate or deprotonate the, um, the molecule in question so how it says it has a pK of 3.96, you need a pH less than 3.96, so maybe like pH of 3, for 24 dinitrophenol to be deprotonated and serve as, um, and have its uh, a conjugate floating around because now you've done, actually, no, sorry pH of less than 3.96 adds more protons into the system so we would actually have the HA of 2,4-dinitrophenol uh, so it would not be um, depro deprotonated now the thing is though is that when you have a pH greater than 3.96 that is enough of a difference in concentration of protons or hydrogens floating around in the solution for the 2,4-dinitrophenol to be deprotonated and end up with its conjugate base. So here, pH of less than 3.96, you still have 2,4-dinitrophenol floating around. And when you then um, increase the pH to the point to where you have it greater than 3.96, that's when the hydrogen start leaving the dinitrophenol to where you start having its conjugate base. So this is for dinitrophenol okay now with that being said we have now for um, benzoic acid let's first find it on our uh, acids and bases table and benzoic there we go it has because we're working with pKa's here as you can see, it has a pKa of benzoic. Okay, pKa is 4.19. So, with that being said, that means actually that a pH of less than 4.19 would deal with benzoic acids conjugate acid which is just a benzoic acid and then when you increase the pH to greater than 4.19 that's when you have deprotonated it and now you're dealing with um, its conjugate base as in more and more will start getting deprotonated so with that being said though as you can see here we have this pH range okay and they're very very close to each other to be able to separate this from benzoic acid using acid base extraction? The answer is yes. Anything is possible as long as the numbers aren't the same. But will this be easy to do? No. In fact, if you look at the um, sheet here, in terms of the different Ka's, we don't have many things. In fact, we have one that sits between benzoic acid and 2,4-dinitrophenol, uh, and that's absorbed sorbic acid. And the way um, 
the way acid base extraction works is pretty much that you want to be able to, in a sense, get to certain levels of pH to where one would be deprotonated and the other one stays protonated. So in this case, I would have to control in the solution, right, that um, I would have to control in the solution like a pH of literally 4 or 4.1 using like any methods I could. But the issue there is that although in that situation you will see that dinitrophenol would be deprotonated and benzoic acid would still be protonated, what actually happens is that we're not going to get much of a solution out. We're not going to get much of that dinitrophenol or benzoic acid out because of the fact that just because you've, in a sense, passed these limits, these are more like soft limits, okay? If we were to put an actual picture of what we're dealing with, it's usually because, as I mentioned, Ka, pKa um, helps you kind of determine like the pKa kind of helps you determine like the where the buffer solution works. It's actually more of a range of like a pH of one on each side. So we're really working with for dinitrophenol, it'll be around two point nine six to four point nine six around there to where it would kind of serve as a buffer to where you have some that start to get deprotonated and others that still remain in its conjugate acid form. And the same thing for benzoic acid, we have a range of um, 3.19 to 5.19 around there. That is so much overlap that frankly, even if you put it to um, a pH of 4 to try to quote unquote separate them, because these are ranges, you wouldn't really get much solution out there. You'd actually, in fact, uh, most likely get still a solution that still be mixed a little bit with some dinitrophenol and benzoic acid because some of it would still be protonated and others would be deprotonated of each solution. If you're dealing with like a weak acid and a much weaker acid, for example, like if we had one that was a pKa of 1.2 and the other pKa was 9.7, this one would be fairly easy to separate because we have so much space to work with where it's like between 2.2 and 8.7. We have so much space to work with that we know that those two are going to be completely separated. But this right here is so much overlap to where you can safely say that no. The answer is no. Technically, you couldn't. Um, if you were had the patience to really try to slowly extract and extract, so like whichever amount would form, you could technically try. But at the end of the day, there will still even be some benzoic acids, even at the pH of 4, that would be deprotonated. Because it's not a rule of thumb to like, I'm not going to change until this happens. Is that it's always going to be a buffer mixture where things are, and things are always moving the solution to where, you know, um, a proton might just attach itself to a benzoic, I mean, to the benzoic side, or it might just detach itself. And then now your solution is going to be impure because you still have a mixture of the dinitrophenol and benzoic acid. So, yeah, if it was this was a real world situation, I would simply just don't waste your time because you're going to struggle a lot trying to separate these two because of this. They're too close. So the answer is no, you can't. Okay. So as I said, two for dinitrophenol and benzoic acid not solved in aqueous phase. That's typically what you find from most organic materials. And then, um, but the conjugate bases, like when you start getting the conjugate bases, usually like it attaches itself to a salt, like sodium, for example, you'll see that it becomes soluble in that aqueous phase. So it's kind of, that's how you separate them. It dissolves into the water, into the solution, and you can extract the solution because it kind of forms layers. Um, but exactly, the issue with this is the acid base extraction. Uh, the pKa is so close between the two that as you're trying to add you know, enough um, sodium hydroxide to be able to separate them, once you hit a, P a pH of 4, you get both the um, diatrophenol and benzoic acid into that solution, aqueous, not aqueous, well, yeah, into the water solution. And then you still have some diatrophenol and uh, benzoic acid still in the non-soluble part. So it would not really separate well. So with that being said, let's move on now to question number four. OK. 
Okay. So we have what is the oxidation number of O? Number.